Hello YouTube, Mr. Report, and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell with Terrell03.com. Today is March 29th, 2021. It is 12.43 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks. And this is the Mr. Report newsletter number three for 2021. This newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 through Revelation. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you don't know what the mystery report, never heard of a mystery report, don't know what the mystery report's all about. So just kind of quickly, let's go down here and check it looks like silver's below 25 um these links are working and you can find out about just click on this link you want to know about the black star you want to know about mystery report click right there that's what these buttons are for you can get my book the mystery explained the hardcover author's edition numbered the next person to purchase a mystery explained looks like this is going to get signed um, the Mystery Expa Explained, first edition, number 70. Number 70 is just sitting there waiting for somebody to claim it if you're into numerology. 70 is a real important number. And it's your opportunity. And so this is a, a $25. It's just $25 per year. You get all of the Mystery Report newsletters back to 2019, unlike the Project Black Star. And if you want to send questions like Gary's, answering questions for Gary today, then you click over here is fifty dollars per year it's not a monthly thing it's just a one year if you subscribe you're going to get a dropbox folder link to access all the newsletters from the beginning and you're going to get a copy of my book the mystery explained that's going to be referenced to many times in in today's report this is the ebook version the instructions all the instructions are your notification email how to open and exactly what you do especially if you're a tutor member where to write to me and and uh, you'll be writing to me where the supporters write to me, not here. And then I'll be, we'll be able to correspond back and forth. And thank goodness. Oh, the, the good news is that my Black Star YouTube channel just made the, this video here. That it's back online. That they did a review and they went back in time and they go, wait a minute. There's nothing wrong with this video. So after, after all this time, they... They reinstated my YouTube channel. I'm pretty happy about that. Tons and tons of work to do now. And I'm just so thankful to God Almighty that all these videos I was I was dreading. There's so hours and hours and days and days and months of videos for on this channel. And uh, that I was going to have to try to remake. And you never get it as good the second time. So the links on the website work. The links on... Uh, and I'm going to be downloaded everything and backing up everything to make sure this... Nothing like this happens again, and uh, so it's, there's some there's relief there. I mean, there's a lot of relief there. So that's how you subscribe with these right here. And if you decide you just want a twenty-five dollar, you want access to the newsletters, click on this one. Later, you want to be a tutor. You want me to be be you. You want me to tutor you. You can send me questions. You just click over here. Twenty-five plus twenty-five gets you one of these fifty-dollar subscriptions. So that's that's the way a lot of people go. Okay. Oh, now back over here. Let's get back over here to the newsletter. And please allow me to apologize. My sinuses, my uh, uh, it's spring has sprung. Let's just put it that way. The oak tree's going crazy. And so is my, my allergies. So what you're looking at up here, these are radio shows. And this is from the Awakened Radio Series. These radio shows from back in 2012. So beginning at the beginning, you, you can catch up. To what's going on this went back once upon a time before covid and i had way more time and was able to do tuesday night chat so you have five of those sessions that are here absolutely no time and i was in florida with a high speed connection out here in the ozarks it's just impossible to be able to do something like that so now the, the program is you have access for 25 dollars a year and you I, you can send me questions and i'll tutor you for the other $25 per year, and we'll just make it work. Okay, this is from Gary. He is a uh, a real involved member. Gary is a, a Black Star subscriber. He's a Survival Group subscriber. 
and he's a member of the Survival Group Program and a member of the Land Acquisition Committee. So, and he's he's uh, renting space here in the Ozarks in preps for for what's coming too. So Gary's one of, one of the best uh, supporters of the research, and uh, these. The last, I believe, the last one and the one before that questions were from Gary. So he's also uh, carrying the, this program, kind of, in sending me so many questions that it's helping me to, it's creating the opportunity for me to make these clarifying statements. So this is going to be a little bit complicated, and I want to try to keep this under an hour, if at all possible. And uh, so I'm going to to. Uh, be pointing to references at to see the activated links are all but we're not going to be able to look so like we're not going to have time to go to each one of them pardon me so we'll we'll uh let, let's get into this then we have i have clarifying statements for karen down below this that if we have time that i'm going to try to get to so um this was from february the 9th gary wrote me at 4 24 p.m and he says hi terrell i'm looking at the drawing in god's mystery okay god's mystery of Christ himself um, from Colossians 2 2 in the beginning God created so this is the diagram that he's referencing and it's on page 92 of the PDF version there's a PDF version EPUB versions hard, hard copy soft, soft copy all that so this is the version that he has this is the diagram that we're looking at and this is a remake of this diagram so in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth this is this is the diagram that is the blueprint. This is the key to unlocking God's true Bible code. You see all these videos on the internet about the God Bible code. This is God's true Bible code. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water are testifying right in Genesis 1-1. That's the key. You take that key, it unlocks doors throughout the scriptures. And once you see the pattern, you see the, these, this pattern everywhere. In the scriptures, inside yourself, inside of others, inside the earth, inside everything. So, spirit witness, blood witness, water witness. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. These are the same three witnesses of John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. See them? And the Word was God, because God and His Word are the same thing here. God and His Word are the same. They are one. In God's infinite realm this is the only realm that's real this is where you and I come from heaven and earth Genesis 1 1 in the beginning God you see is created right here because this realm and this realm are created they have a beginning just like it says and they have an end this realm is the only realm that's real this is where we're that's where we come from things that were done here are being done over and over and over again here and here and whenever you stand this picture up which is, this is the same thing you're looking at when you stand it up like this you have a man the man of God God heaven earth see it so there's beginnings of a pattern here to help you to see what's going on this is tremendous stuff once you see it so this diagram is drawn as the Hebrew is written deliberately see everything's backwards just the way Hebrew is written from this way going this way That's, there, so there's a method to the madness when you go through the mystery explain you'll see it's a manual and it's an instruction book that requires you to do a series of exercises and create your own book the red folder that expands and gets bigger and bigger eventually it gets bigger than the Bible and my book put together if you do go through all the exercises so this is the diagram if you want to stop and just look at it you'll see it's a reverse of what I just showed you this is the God's infinite realm God Almighty God's Word the realm of the Word this is where wisdom and knowledge are hidden and then this water witness realm this is creation Adam the Son of God this is the Son of God with a big S this is the Son of God with a little s right here and he is all things which means in the heavens heaven and earth I'll show you that here in a minute this is all this is all things that are in heaven the Father Son and the Holy Spirit so the word of John 1 1 through 3 and 14 and 
heaven of Genesis 1 1, they're the same thing, the exact same thing. Heaven and the Word. That's where my Father who art in heaven gets his name from heaven of Genesis 1 1. And if you look, you'll see there's also a heaven in Genesis 1 8. Because there's a heaven in Genesis 1 8 that's of this creation. And then there's the highest heaven, which is the heaven of Genesis 1 1. David, Solomon, they're going to be making references to that in the uh, scriptures. Okay, so then, first I, he, he's telling me this is the diagram that he's looking at, and then am I thinking and visualizing, um, am I correct in thinking and visualizing at this point the following. Satan has been created by God Almighty. So then I have to say, wait a minute, first you are looking at a diagram shared on page 14, but this diagram demonstrates how Hebrew is read from right to left rather than the Greek, which is from left to right in the modern English. Satan was created by God through his word in the infinite realm. Here. This is where Satan exists. There's no such thing as Satan here or Satan here any more than the word. The word is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In their singularity form, then it's heaven and the word. In their broken down trinity form, they are the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Satan is over here in this realm. He's been cut off and thrown down to heaven. And then he was beaten by Mark, Michael the Archangel and thrown down into this realm where he's the God of this world right now until his head is crushed under our feet. We, he's thrown into the lake of fire at the end of Revel at the, uh, in Revelation 20. Okay. So that's the thing to realize. Satan is, uh, is in this realm over here. It's whenever you try to bring Satan here and Satan here that you can have difficulties. This is going to be where the dragon's domain is. This is where the devil's domain is. So that you can see how that can be confusing. So that's the way that it works. That's what scripture is saying. Once you realize the three witnesses of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and the devil... And the, the son of perdition, the, the man of sin, whatever you want to call them, and their false prophet here is the earth realm thing. They're going to incarnate here as men, just like we are. They're doing it at the end of the age. They're not here yet, but they're going to be. And everything being done here and here has already been done here. Ecclesiastes 1.9. They're being done over and over again. Because this is infinite, there's no such thing as time and space here. Time and space exist here. They're artificial. It's an illusion. So we can reproduce over and over again what happened here already. So from our perspective, this realm is frozen motionless. And it's going to remain frozen motionless until the end of all the ages. Everything in heaven is moving in very, 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 very slow motion. Because heaven is almost infinite. Like constellations interacting with one another. So we here are moving through the this time, all this time that's going by from beginning of Genesis. From the Genesis 2, let's say. All this time's passing within one second of what's happening in heaven. So the battle between Michael the Archangel and the dragon and his head being severed and his head is falling to the ground, but it's frozen motionless. So it's happening, just like it says in Revelation, the battle, but it stops. It stopped from our perspective. It's the time differential because of the size differential of these different... Whenever you go through the mystery explained, everything makes makes more sense. So... That's what I'm trying to explain up here. God's infinite realm. Um, that existed long, long, long before heaven and earth were ever conceived upon. And God had the need to create a savior in the infinite realm because of the satanic rebellion, which inspired God to then create Adam through his word. So everything's cooking along in God's infinite realm. One day God decides, well, we, I really need to keep a secret from my sons. For some reason, we can discuss that when we get back to the infinite realm. So God needed this guardian. And he created him. He gave him all these powers. The hidden passageways, the hidden doors, where the hidden wisdom is. Hidden. So then, who, who do you think knows where everything is? That's right. Satan. So Satan becomes greatest. He has the greatest stones in his chest plate. He can go everywhere. We can't go everywhere. And that led to the deception until iniquity was found in him and then the Stanic Rebellion and things go downhill from there. Destruction in the infinite realm 
which created the need for God to create a Savior, which is the reason that he created Adam in the first place. You can learn these things once you see the three witnesses and the types. It becomes very easy to see later in the timeline once you go from an infant and then you have the seeds of faith inside of you that then the shoots grow up and the garden's in you. And then the fruit grows and the next generation of seeds spill out and they grow and you have an orchard, a forest inside of your heart where all these things are mature. It happens that way. It begins just with a seed and watering and God causing the growth. 1 Corinthians 3, start at 6. Okay, so God had the need to create a Savior in the infinite realm. So Satan took the bait and he murdered Adam like the devil crucified the Lord of glory. Only then did God command his word to go over there and incarnate as heaven so we can create Adam, the earth, in you for the restoration of all things. So the reason heaven and earth are created is so that Adam's soul and his body can be restored, put back together as one, so that he can stand up brand new, raised from the dead in the infinite realm. From our perspective, Adam is dead in the infinite realm. His guts are scattered everywhere, and you were incarnate inside of him. That's what gods do. We incarnate inside of each other. That's one of the reasons that Paul teaches that we are members of Christ's body and individually members of one another. It's true. That's Romans 12, start at 4. And it exp it's explained. The little things that you can't understand outside of the three witness um, mystery sets, they're all explained once you see the pattern. That's what the goal of the Mystery Explained in this project is all about, to help you see it. So therefore, you see creation, Adam, as the Son of God in all things, while Jesus Christ is from above heaven with all knowledge and wisdom hidden in him. At this point, we should realize that heaven and earth are mere incarnations and that the only realm that is real is God's infinite realm where you are God's. So Christ quotes David. The, the Jews were getting on to him about himself calling himself the son of God. That was blasphemy to them. And he says, why are you getting, I'm, I'm characterizing, why are you getting angry at me Whenever the scriptures say that you're, you are gods, and I'm only claiming to be the Son of God. Think about that for a second, because we are gods. We're from the infinite realm. We're here for judgment. That's the purpose, Hebrews 9, 27. Die once, and then the judgment. That's what we're all here for, if you're a seventh-day person. Six-day people that are here, they're all victims. We'll get into that more. Okay, Satan is keeping secrets from... God, the gods in God's infinite realm doing what he was created for by Almighty God. Okay, that's number two. That's Gary's statement, and I go, whoa, horsey. Look at the diagram again to realize God's infinite realm is beyond the, the veil of time and space. Everything in God's infinite realm is frozen motionless from our teeny perspective. The satanic rebellion happened in God's infinite realm long before the creation of heaven and earth that are temporal and where time and space are created illusions from our infinite realm perspective. See, that's from our infinite realm perspective. Those, those things are all illusions. And from our infinite realm perspective, heaven and earth only exist for the flash of a single instant. This is a perspective thing. The dragon's incarnation in heaven, I, I was jumping ahead a little bit before. Then the devil's incarnation in the earth are happening on earth as it is in heaven. Fashion like everything else that's has been done. Ecclesiastes 9, 1 through 11. We're doing things already done over and over and over again. Okay, being done again and again within the created envelope of time and space. And then I ask a question, which I don't usually do, do I? Um, are you getting the deja vu feeling like we've had this conversation already? Because we have. Twice. This is the third time. Satan is, could be, planning his rebellion. That's the number third thing. That's on Gary's little checklist. Satan's rebellion has already happened long before heaven and earth were created. Satan's rebellion happened before God had the need to create the infinite realm savior in Adam, who was created for the sole purpose of being sacrificed. Earth is the first Adam being restored one member at a time, and heaven is the last Adam also being restored one member at a time. God's word is one with God in God's infinite realm and has no need of being restored. Think about that for a second. God's word. God's word is perfect. God's word and, his, and God are one and the same thing in the infinite realm. 
They've been there from the beginning, and they're going to be there forever. There's no beginning. There's no end. It's infinite. The heaven is an incarnation. That's what Christ is saying. You're gods, and I'm just an incarnation. I'm just son of God. Um, God's word had by necessity to incarnate as heaven of Genesis 1.1. So heaven can be restored as Adam's soul, while the earth is Adam's physical body. Now let me stop right there, see if I can hold my place and show you another diagram that's right here. A little bit complicated. These, these, are these, the simple diagrams are in the front of the book. The, the complicated, more sophisticated diagrams are in the back of the book. When you go from the beginning to the end, then you're, it's built upon like building a house. You build a foundation, then the next brick, and the next brick. When you do the exercises, then by the time you get to this, everything makes perfect sense. Peter, John, and James. Then Moses, Christ, and Elijah. Moses, Christ, and Elijah are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. These are also the three witnesses to come. They're the ones that are at the end. The ones at the beginning. Christ is the Lord God of Genesis 2. And this is Adam. And this is Eve. Her name means drawn. You think it means drawn because Moses was drawn out of the Nile, right? Or drawn from the cleft of the rock, right? Nope, because Eve was drawn out of Adam, just like the earth was drawn out of the, the heavens, heaven and earth was drawn out of the earth of Genesis 1-1. The sun is drawn, well, the sun is begotten, the Holy Spirit is drawn out of the word, and then that leaves my Father who art in heaven. Those, the power from on high overshadows the Holy Spirit, and the sun is begotten by the overlapping of the two, just like your soul is begotten of the two, just like heaven of Genesis 1-8. So when you realize this, this is heavens, earth, and heaven. This is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the first Adam. This is the last Adam. They're both laying on an altar. They're both being sacrificed. God is up here handing down New Jerusalem. So that it can sit in the center as an administrative hub in heaven. Re Revelation 21.1. Okay. And so the members of Christ's body are in the Lamb. That's us. Peter, John, and James that obey the gospel of the kingdom, they're over here. They're the body of Moses. 1 Corinthians 10, start at 1. Baptize into Moses, into the sea. All those water witness signs are there for a reason, like the water signs are all over Moses, and they're all over Noah, and they're all over Bathsheba, because those are all water witnesses. They are all incarnations of the olive tree from Zechariah 4. There's two of them. One's Adam and one's Eve. Those are the only. That's the exception to the Hebrews 9:27 rule. Adam and Eve keep coming again and again and again and again. Abraham and Sarah, Adam and Eve. David, Bathsheba, Adam and Eve. Once you see the water witness types, the spirit witness types, the blood witness types, then you'll see it. You begin seeing the picture, and scriptures begin talking to you in angel song, and these things become self-evident later in the timeline. If you can't see the three witnesses, if you don't have the Spirit of God in your heart, so that He can tap you and go, hey, look at this, and show and reveal these things to you, the mystery is revealed while prophecy is fulfilled. There are two totally different things. One is seen, prophecy is seen by the Old Testament prophets. Mystery is hidden in God until it's revealed through the Apostle Paul. The wisdom given him, Second Peter 3, start at verse 14. Mixing prophecy with the wisdom given him leads to destruction that's the dis that's distorting the word of god which the the weak unstable mishandle okay so this gives you an image a larger overview image of what god's doing with the heaven and the earth that he created in genesis 1 1 it's all about the restoration of all things so we are members of adam's body here and we're members of christ's body here the first adam and the last adam eventually become one and the same thing to go back into the infinite realm beyond that second veil where Adam stands up, all the members of his body restored, all the righteous members, and all the unrighteous, the wicked, they end up in the lake of fire. That's how it works. That's what scripture says. So, where, where are we going to pick up here? So, God's word has no need to be restored. It's perfect in God, in his infinite realm. They're one. Heaven is an incarnation. So God's word had, by necessity, I read, you, I read you that one already. God's word is the light sent into the world as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
So read Isaiah 53 again, because the passage was written in the past tense for many reasons that include describing how Adam was created to become sin offering and a sacrifice in God's infinite realm. Adam lived 930 years under the devil's authority that mimicked those infinite realm events. Adam suffered beheading under King Herod as John the Baptist to reproduce events already done in the infinite realm. When Jesus Christ shouted his last words on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He uttered the same words of Adam when dying in the infinite realm. And the same words Adam uttered when cast out of, the, of heaven on the day Adam and Eve were driven from the garden. Same words, my God, my God, why are you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Christ repeated it for the third time when he was on the cross. As the last Adam. There are things that physical Adam, this universe could not do. He cannot go to the cross and pay for his own sin. That's why in the, guard, in the um, Jordan River, John the Baptist had to baptize him. He had to baptize him. That's why he's the only person that could baptize him. Because John the Baptist represents the earth. Go to John 3, was it, is it 36? And he's from above. And, you know, he speaks of things of above. I'm of the earth. That's what John says. I'm of the earth. I speak of things in the earth. He's not trying to compete with Christ. Christ is the heavenly Messiah. John the Baptist, the earthly Messiah. So whenever Christ says that John already came, but they didn't recognize him, he wasn't talking about recognizing him as Elijah. He told them that he was Elijah. Matthew 7, 14. If you can bear it, he was Elijah, who is to come. He told them he was Elijah. That's not what he was saying. People don't understand this today. They don't understand that John the Baptist was Adam. The same Adam who was Elijah. The same one that was Abraham. The same one that's David. The same one, you see what I mean? The same olive tree that keeps incarnating over and over and over again while everybody else comes one time. So Adam and Eve are testifying to their disobedient children, well, to their obedient children sometimes, and sometimes to their disobedient children when they come at the end of the age as the two witnesses, it's going to be Adam and Eve. Look at the powers they have. Same powers of Elijah and Moses. That's why some people think that it's Elijah and Moses that come, because it is. But Elijah and Moses are Adam and Eve too. That's the part that escapes the notice of almost everybody. Those of us that can see it are doing so through the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water in the patterns that are in Scripture and the spirit that's alive inside of us testifying that's what's happening. Okay. So then uh, again, and again, another scripture says, They will look upon him who they have pierced. And I will pour out on the house of David, the house of David, the house of David, the house of David. That's the house of Adam. David is one of his incarnations. Go to Ezekiel 34. This is an extra. And start at verse 22. And you'll see that David is going to feed them himself. He's going to. He's going to feed them himself. And then after that, go read Ezekiel. You get through 34 and then go through 35 and 36. You'll see a dozen uses of the term desolation, desolate, made desolate. And then you're going to see in Ezekiel some of the best words of the Bible. Ezekiel 37, you start off with the bones in Israel. And then by the time you get to verse 24, you're going to see David is raised again forever as king. That's Revelation 21, verse 1, in the new earth. Whenever he's, the sanctuary's there and he's there forever. It's the same man that the Lord God Christ, the Lamb of God, made in the garden to sit on that very throne in the center of this earth in the land that was Mesopotamia, which is going to be the greatest kingdom in the world, the kingdom of Israel. That's what's coming. That's what the prophecy says. That's precisely what God's doing right now. The day of the Lord is just about to start. You're seeing it happening right before our eyes. So these prophecies will be fulfilled in multiple ways through the ages to come on earth as it is in heaven fashion. But all those things converge into one and the same thing when Adam is restored before all of his children, all of his God brethren in God's infinite realm. That we all know each other. We all know each other. You know me. I know you. You incarnated inside of me. I incarnated inside of you. We know each other from the inside out intimately. All of us do. We're doing things already done. Those that deceived you, tricked you, and took from you, stole from you, lied to you in the infinite realm are doing it here. 
they have no power over it. Any power they have comes from far beyond. It's all fixed, and they cannot change it any more than you can change it. It's going to keep happening over and over again. So because we're doing things that are already done. So therefore, if you are following, everything already done in God's infinite realm is playing out repeatedly in heaven and earth. So that um, Adam's soul, heaven, and body, earth, can be restored as one, first and last Adam. So Adam can be restored in God's infinite realm. So heaven and earth exist for one purpose only. That's to restore one God in God's infinite realm. And his name is Adam. And you can deduce from that that there are other universes like this one where the where the, the God being restored is you. You are a member of Adam's body here. Adam is a member of your body in your universe. That's the way it works. Everybody killed during the Satanic Rebellion gets restored. We're all being restored simultaneously in different universes when you realize it. Then Gary writes, Satan has access to all three realms. Uh, you have to say yes or no. So we have, we, it's, it's important that we not get bogged down in semantics where we are thinking in, in terms using different definitions for those terms. That's why it's very important that you watch the six introductory videos at terrell03.com before starting my book. Because we're going to understand what the term gospel means, what the church means, the baptism for us versus the baptism for Israel, for the, the, the kingdom bride. What's the difference between God and my Father who art in heaven? What's the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus? And how do the mystery diagrams work? By the time you get through there, you're going to have a foundation. And then whenever you're, you're one of my tutor subscribers, you're going to write to me. And whenever we say gospel, we're going to know what we mean by that. So whenever we get more in depth like myself and Gary here then we're going to be going deeper and deeper and deeper and we have to make sure we're using the same definitions for the terms so Satan is a singularity in God's infinite realm has been cut off and thrown down into heaven so you see Satan has access to all three realms is not true he's been cut off from the infinite realm where God cut him off chucked him down into heaven that he created for this purpose of judgment you see okay where his incarnations, that's where the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are fighting Michael the Archangel right now. It's just almost infinite host. They are big. That's why Christ says that there, among those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist because he's Adam, an incarnation of Adam. He represents everybody. Go back to Genesis uh, 2 7, and everybody that's ever going to be born is in him. Think about that. He's the greatest. Everybody else is inside of him, everybody else is going to come out of him. And Eve, even Eve came out of them, and everybody's going to come out of Eve, and then you have the angel half and the man half and all that stuff. Okay? So, um, but then the least that's in the kingdom of heaven, the least in the kingdom of heaven is Peter. The least among us. The, the very teeniest little um, God incarnate in the almost infinite realm is Peter. He was chosen to be first for a reason because he is the last. Christ keeps saying, this is the saying, the first is last and the last is first. Well, Peter, go to Matthew chapter 10, start at verse 2. And the first, Peter, because he's the last. He's the one that doesn't have weak faith. He has zero faith, none. Peter, John, and James, the first three, the ones that went up to, t to witness the Mount of Transfiguration, are the ones with zero faith, zero, none. That's why he said that if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could move mountains. He's not talking, he's not teaching that anyone's ever going to move mountains he's saying that they have zero faith none even if they had the size of, of a mustard seed they could do that but they don't have that that's why they were crying instead of being at the tomb on the third day Christ told them over and over again third day I'm going to be raised from the dead who was there Peter John James no any of the twelve no no faith who was there the women but then the women had oil and wrappings for his dead body the, that is a, the, those things that they carried in their hands symbolize their lack of faith. Because if he's raised from the dead and he's standing in glory, they don't need any of that stuff. You see how that works? Okay, and that's why he said to doubting Thomas, blessed, blessed are you because you put your hands in my wounds and, and you believe, but more blessed are those who believe without all this stuff. Which is so true. Okay, so then, so you have the dragon, you have the beast and the false prophet, and you have the dragon, 
the um, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, and the false prophet here. So the dragons in heaven, the devil's here. Dragons in heaven, the devil's here in this earth realm. In the infinite realm, Satan is all three. All put together. Just like God's word is there as one. There's no father. My father art in heaven in, in the infinite realm. There's no son in the infinite realm. There's no such thing as anything like that. There's no Holy Spirit there. It doesn't exist because it's God's word that's in him. They exist in heaven and earth because those are incarnations. Once you realize, you apply the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to Satan, you realize that Satan doesn't exist here either, unless you're talking about all three of the witnesses as a singularity. So the devil, the son of perdition, and the false prophet, okay, those three witnesses testify for Satan in the infinite realm. Okay, so Adam is in the garden living in the perfect age of creation without Eve. Okay, now, now probably with all these explanations, we have, some will need to go back to the top and remember what our topic is exactly on that diagram and what's happening in those singularities. So we're having some confusion because my answers to your questions are supposed to be about the diagram above that shows God's infinite realm and heaven and the earth as singularities. In other words, the time we are using with the timeline we are using with this diagram places us within Genesis 1-1 that is before darkness was upon the face of the deep. Therefore, Adam is already sacrificed in God's infinite realm. God's word is incarnate as heaven and Adam is the earth held together in him. All right, Colossians 1, go to 18 through 20. All things are held together in him. So in reality, I just showed you the tabernacle form. In, in, the, in my book, you'll see that the reality is that the egg of the, uh, the boiled egg model is correct. The shell is infinite. That's God and his word and all of us as gods in that infinite realm. Heaven is the yolk, I mean the white of the egg, the white of the egg. And inside of that contained in that yolk, that's the earth held together in him. Like Christ is held together in the infinite realm, in God. Whenever you look at it uh, from that way. As singularities, that's how the egg model is right. When you break them down, each are three witnesses. Okay, so remember that uh, Christ saying about on earth as it is in heaven is actually act accurately conveyed as on earth water as it is in heaven blood as it is in God's infinite realm spirit. So as in God's infinite realm is the part that's left off for now. Christ is going to give Israel the complete, or Elijah is going to give him the complete teaching when he comes to restore all things. So Adam is in the, this is uh, Gary, Adam is in the garden living a perfect age without Eve. Oh, this is where we're having problems. My apologies for repeating myself. In other words, the timeline we are using in this diagram places us within Genesis 1.1. Okay. I already read you that part. My apologies for losing my place again. Therefore, Adam is already sacrificed. God's word is incarnate. And Adam is the earth held together in him. This is where I was. There is there is no such thing yet as God to come, God who is and God who was, from Revelation 1.8. Those are the three witnesses testifying for the Almighty. Like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit testify for God's word, or heaven of Genesis 1.1. Okay. So, uh, my Father who art in heaven, oh, there's no such thing as those three witnesses of the Almighty, or the three witnesses of the Son. Or the heavens, heaven, and earth of Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Those are the three witnesses testifying for the earth of Genesis 1, 1. There is not yet any Adam and Eve incarnate on the earth in skins. So not, and not yet any of the, uh, the two olive trees, et cetera, et cetera. See, Adam and Eve are the two olive trees of Zechariah 4. Also, there appears to be some misconception here as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one and the same in the heaven like Adam and Eve and her seed are in the earth. That's where these things came from. The six day people are living in Adam creation. And I go, Amen. All things in the heavens, heaven and earth are in the earth in Genesis 1 1, in the perfect ages. How do we know the perfect ages? Go to Ecclesiastes 1 started 9. The ages that existed before us. Ages, ages, ages. The, um, the evil age of, of Galatians 1.4, the evil age, this current present evil age, begins when the darkness falls in Genesis 1.2. That is the, the uh, defining feature, the darkness. That is the 
the evil forces of this darkness from Ephesians 6.12, for example. That, that changes in Revelation 21.1, which is the eighth day. We're still in the seventh day, seventh day, seventh day. All this time since Genesis 2.4. These are the generations. Okay. The six day people are evolved from the waters of Genesis 1.20, like the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, the fish of the sea. These are the three, these are three witnesses um, that you'll come to realize as you grow in the knowledge of the three witnesses. The seventh day people are created, uh, um, are created and are gods like Adam incarnate here in the earth with a part in Adam's recent incarnation. So this, for example, is where the negative blood comes from. When you go back to ancient times, you go into the Chinese races, the Aborigine races, American Indian races, they are 100% RH positive, exclusive. All the races are. They have straight hair. They are beardless. They have features, characteristics. They have immunity to the corona because this happened thousands of years ago. And so their genes recognize the threat better than the, the Seventh-day people that are here that have, well, put together uh, genes based upon six day in other words looking at the model of the sixth day god created the seventh day that's how adam was created now we have a part in adam's incarnation from genesis 3 21 that happened 12,500 years ago whenever adam and eve walked the earth in this current incarnation so that's where we are descended from seventh day people and that's where the the negative blood came from not from the the Genesis 6 from the sons of God that were going into women. Some, a lot of people think that's where it came from. That is not where it came from. It came from Adam and Eve in the garden. And they were all heavenly until they were thrown down. There was no, uh, there was no conception. There was no Cain, no Abel, none of that until after they were thrown down onto the earth because there's no such thing as those things in heaven where the garden is. The garden is in proximity to the center of the throne from Revelation 7. Go 14, 15, 16, 17. You see the, the lamb there is in the center of the throne. That's where the Lord God and Adam and Eve were hanging out until they got thrown down because there's a heavenly garden and there's an earthly counterpart. That Mesopotamia is where they were thrown down to, that area of the Middle East. So Eve has not yet been created then. Amen. In fact, the son has yet to be begotten in Genesis 1 1. There's no Holy Spirit either. God must sacrifice his word for the Holy Spirit to emerge so the power from on high can overshadow her. So the Holy Child can be called the Son of God. So what you see in Luke 1.35, is already, it's a replay of what's already happened before. Mary's womb is a type of heaven. So the above is a snapshot of what I imagine is the current situation of the diagram. Please correct me on which the items are wrong. He said, you, uh, you have things right when everything in God, heaven, and earth of the diagram exists in a singu as singularity expressions. The three witnesses of God, God's word equal heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and earth, heaven, heaven, and earth, only exists after God has sacrificed Adam. That's when the earth was made void, formless and void. That was to reproduce what had already happened when Satan did it, murdered Adam in the infinite realm. And uh, and his word to become trinities rather than singularities. The trinities are everywhere. They're everywhere in the Bible. And the heaven of Genesis 1-8, for example, is in the earth of Genesis 1-1 until the waters above, heavens, and the waters below. Remember, the heavens existed long ago when the earth was formed out of water and by water. Second Peter 3. Same pattern. So you overlap to beget heaven. Your soul is begotten in the very same way as the Son of God and heaven. By the overlapping of your spirit, which is the power from on high, the breath of life, and your physical body, the dust of the ground, that begets your soul in the mystery process. So thank you in advance. And then I have, uh, to keep this under an hour, I still have a little bit of time here. And this is for Karen. I'm going to run through this kind of quickly. Um, how old was Adam? man when he was created by God and as soon as I see people doing this right here I can see they're off and once you see the patterns it's easy to look at someone's commentary that has things mixed wrong wrongly and you can see exactly where they made the mistake and what they need to what you need to share with them so they can see it I mean you can share the seed but God causes the growth 
all these explanations I have, all I have is seeds. That's all I have is seeds and water. And so you keep asking the questions and I'll keep giving the answers. Those are seeds. That's all we have here. That's all you're ever going to have to be able to help somebody see these things. You put the seeds in. If the heart's good, you keep watering. God's going to cause the growth. And you keep praying about the growth part and God will cause the growth. You can help a lot of people with this type of information with sharing and prayer, sharing and prayer. It really, really works. Okay, this is from Hidden in the Crag. This is Hidden in the Crag Lady. How old was Adam? So there's some statements here. And I'm just going to go through. This is what I think it's a she wrote. And then I'm going to just going to give my commentary. I'm not going to read it word for word like with Gary's reply. Okay, so thank you for your writing. Please forgive sister, but your Hidden in the Crag Lady is drawing some incorrect conclusions. I am sure about, I'm not sure about whether you know this lady, but you can forward my comments if you wish. I love to help people, but uh, generally, then I'm going to help you see, if you have questions on the Mystery Explained like Gary's doing, I'm happy to help you with this. You see how much time goes into this. But if you want to send me the work of somebody else, their broken doctrine, I'm, no, please forgive. No, I don't do that anymore. Did that for decades. Don't, and even before they invented the internet. Using the, the, I can remember having a stack of letters tall to go to the, answering people that we were corresponding back and forth U.S. mail. That was back in the 70s and the 80s before they created the internet. So this makes it a whole lot easier, obviously, you know, to be able to do that. Okay, so let's just start off right here. Now, in Genesis 1, it says that God created man on the sixth day. And then it says God created Adam. And it's a closer look to what happened on the sixth day. And that is absolutely wrong. 100% wrong. Let's count. The first days of Genesis 1. Uh, first day, second day, third, sixth day. On the seventh day, God rests. You don't see a reference to God creating Adam. You see a reference to the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim. Elohim is working in Genesis 1. That's the Almighty. And he says, let us make man. Because God who is is talking to God who was and God who is to come, his prophet and his priest. He says, let's make man like us. That image is spirit, blood, and water. Just like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, heaven, heaven, and earth, we have a spirit, soul, and a body. That's it. Your family, man, woman, seed, spirit, blood, water. That's why homosexuality is an abomination. Because you have two men, that's a one-one. You have two women, that's a three-three. Okay? When you're trying to do the math, the number of man is what? Six. You know why? Because one spirit plus two blood plus three water equals six. Three witnesses put together. That's God's formula. It's God's Bible code, and that's his numerology. Every spirit witness of the Bible has a number one on it. And then the two goes to the blood witness, even though it came last. So the last that's made first is the blood witness. It's put ahead, not of the spirit witness, but ahead of the water witness, because the water witness appears first. First you have the Father, and you have the Holy Spirit. They intermingle, and the begotten is the Son. So the begotten part's last, but he has number two, because God says so. So, okay, so um, no, this is Genesis 1. In Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, the perfect ages were there. There were no such thing as men, women, angels, babies, none of that. Everybody was created perfect, mature, complete, done. There were it's no concept. That's why the little children and things enjoy it while you can because there's a day coming when there's going to be no more children. There's going to be no more birds in the air, no more fish in the sea either. Those things are only here because the universe is broken. Once people are in heaven and we are created again like we're supposed to be, we're all singularities again, then there's no such thing as male or female. Just imagine if there's no such thing as male and female, there can be no such thing as women. There's no procreation, nothing like that. Everything's created. That's the way it's supposed to be. Number two. Remember, this is hidden in the Craig Lady. I believe Genesis 2 just recapitulates Genesis 1, and that is absolutely not true. Because everything that happens in Genesis 2 is on the seventh day, after God rests in Genesis 2, verse 3. Then you get into the generations of, of the heaven and the earth that is attached to this planet. So... What you have here is an Eretz shift. If you Google Eretz, E-R-E-T-S, shift, S-H-I-F-T, you'll see I've written on that for way back in 
2004 go to christianforums.com or anywhere there's a eritz shift where the earth of genesis 1 1 is the same word eritz in the hebrew and it's going to be used to mean the entire singularity universe heaven seven and earth combined and then just the earth part that underneath the heaven and the earth and then as you go through Genesis 1 you're seeing the divisions of our universe our planet our Sun is a second or third generation star it's not a first one it, it, it has a different age than the rest of the universe oh pardon me for example when you get down to the land the Eretz in Genesis 2 this is a land that, and then you get to the land of the garden the Eretz shift Whenever you begin to understand that, then you can see that Eretz is like the word earth in English. It can mean the whole earth or it can mean a handful of dirt. And it, can, it also has application with cosmos, for example, the Greek, eight different definitions. It can mean the whole universe or it can mean a handful of dirt. And it can mean the, the uh, Israel as a race or it can mean all the Gentiles as a race, as a, se as a re separate race from Israel. So that's what I mean. Whenever a lot of the, the Christians are trying to debate and talk, they're using the same words, but they have different definitions. That's one of the reasons that they're confused. And, every, and agreeing to disagree is a cop-out. Do the research and make yourself a solid argument. This was my life. and I, This was going to be my life 100%. No 9-11 inside job. No black star, super plume, and all this stuff. God put that on me after this book was written. And these conclusions are, drawn, are written in stone, just like 9-11. It's, it's in stone. Now, Project Black Star is the ongoing investigation. Okay, so I believe, nope, that's not. And then in the first chapter, we see a snapshot of the sixth day of creation. And chapter two gives us more depth look into that. That is absolutely no, uh, no, there are no two creation scenarios of man. They don't contradict each other. Whenever you start telling, using all these knots, no's, this, not, this, this, it's because you don't understand. What you're talking about so what do i say no <laughs> god is working in genesis 1 to create this is what i just explained to you i'm not going to go through that again and um the lord god is doing the creating here's the important part to realize whenever god rested in genesis 2 3 this is one of the most profound statements you're ever going to hear from any commentary in the bible whenever god rests in genesis 2 3 he rests in his son who is the Lord God. The Lord God of Genesis 2 is the Lamb of God in heaven. The Lamb of God is the Lord God. Same person. He's the one. If you go and if, Whenever you go through Malachi, start at, at chapter 3, start at 1, and the Lord, right there is the Lord, same Lord God right here in Genesis 2. And he's the same Lord that John the Baptist cleared the way for. And he, John the Baptist said he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When you take the combined testimony of all the witnesses and let them testify together, then you're going to draw the same conclusions that I am. So, the Lord God is Christ. He's working on the seventh day. God works six days and he rests. But whenever you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, start at verse 16, 17, and about the new creation. By the time you get down to the bottom, you're going to see that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. That's what he's been doing since Genesis 2-4. He's rested, yeah, in his son. So the power that Christ has because he has Christ in him. And guess what? This son of man, right now, right here, this son of God, has Christ incarnate in him. That is from Colossians 1-27. Okay, the hope of glory, Christ in you is an incarnation heaven is incarnate inside of me and guess what God is incarnate inside of him reconciling the world to himself he's trying to that's the way this works so we're in the we're being conformed to the image of the Son conformed to because we are three witnesses and we are a tabernacle Christ is inside of us incarnate and God is incarnate inside of him you see that's a trinity that's a trinity of spirit blood and water but Christ isn't like us in that way because he's just Christ and he has God incarnate inside of him so he has no need for a tabernacle of Christ to contain Christ in him he is the Word of God with God incarnate inside of him so we're being conformed to that image by the end of the ages we will be conformed to the same image as the Son is so this is then um, so I give 
pretty lengthy commentary here. You're getting more on the side commentary in, my, in what I'm saying. So this is how I interpret scripture, and this is the lady that's speaking. Another thing I should mention is that the Hebrew word here for both man and Adam is, and, and uh, with them both meaning man in the generic sense, that is mankind and general humanity. Yeah, whenever you're looking at the Greek, um, the Hebrew on the surface, then that's how it's going to appear to you whenever you think that you're trying to connect man from Genesis 1, 26, for example, to the man that was created and had his, has breath blown into his nostrils in Genesis 2, 4 by the Lord God. You have a different entity, if you want to call God an entity. Elohim is doing the work over here in Genesis 1, and the Lord God is doing the work over here. And if you go, let's see, Ephesians chapter 4, start at 5, you're going to see there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Just one. That one Lord is Jesus Christ. And then when you get down to verse 6, it says in there, and there's one God who is in all and through all and in all. That's the Almighty who sent him to die for us. One Lord. And that Lord is in Genesis 2 working. He's still standing at the right hand of God because he's doing intercessory work as a high priest. He's making intercession for us. He's our one mediator. Christ Jesus is the entire realm, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, interceding for us to the infinite realm, God. He's also incarnate inside of us with God inside of him and in making intercession as our intercessor, Romans 8. I believe that's 30, verse 34. Okay, so, and then I just have to stop and say everybody has the same right to be wrong as everybody else. And um, God's word is self-interpreting once you see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Adam first stepped upon the, the uh, earth part of the garden. I have a little mess up here, don't I? In Genesis 3.21, when God places two olive trees in human skins. This is where the Rh negative blood originated, as all six-day people have Rh positive exclusive blood. Straight black hair and generally beardless, unlike the seventh day people counterparts. And that, of course, is, is if unless they have seventh day blood in them, because that happens. Why is that happening? Because in the infinite realm, when God made Adam the first time, he made him with members of his own body, infinite body. That's who the Chinese, the Aborigines, the Oriental races, all of them, that's who they represent. Then, you have the gods that are like Adam that incarnated inside of him. Well, some of those gods that incarnated inside of him interacted with the original hosts. That's what you're seeing going on between China and the United States, for example. These are scenarios that have already played out. The gods, the bad gods, satanic gods, sons of Cain that incarnated inside of Adam, destroyed from the inside. It destroyed. That's why I say China is not here to be judged. They're a whole different program from the gods that are here to pour the judgment for active participation in the satanic rebellion. Think about it. Go back to the infinite realm. Those are members of Adam's body on the day he was made. They're not gods like us in the infinite realm. They couldn't make a decision about going with Satan or not going with Satan. They could only be victimized by the bad gods that incarnate inside of Adam. That's what's happening here. That's why you hear me every now and then talking about how I admire the Chinese. Because they're standing up against an insurmountable force. But they're doing it. When you realize that they are members of Adam's body and the other gods like Adam are the ones that are here to try to kill them like they're trying to kill the rest of us. So they're victims. For sure. 100%. So then um, I, I, at the end, P.S., I attached a uh, PDF copy of The Mystery Explained, written in 2005, published 2017. Watch the six introductory videos in the scripture section at, uh, for more information, if interested. Then on this channel, then there's not going to be any information shared about the, uh, I mean, it's in the newsletter, but it's not going to be shared on the channel because we don't want to get in, into any trouble about those kind of things. Okay, we're going to keep this right here, Mr. Report, and uh, you can get more information at the website, and um, subscribe right over here, I already showed you, subscribe right here, and then this, this, this is the last newsletter. This now, this is the third one for the year. One per month is what I'm able to do now. And you're going to go to 2020. There's 20 of them in there. And then you're going to go to 2019. There's five in there. 
start at number one. When you get the whenever you subscribe and you get the Dropbox folder link, go to the earliest newsletter and begin there and go through all of that information, watch the video, and then go to number two, and then go to number three, go to number four until you get to this one. And then the things in this one are going to make more sense. In other words, there's a breadcrumb trail that's left for you. And if you will build upon the foundation inside of you, it's the new inner man inside of you that I'm addressing. The new inner, the new man that's inside of you, that's renewed day by day, is the one that's going to show you God's mystery. He has more than seeds. Let's put it that way. All I have is seeds. We're going to help him to get strong, and then he's going to show you. And it's Christ in you is what it is. It's the almost infinite realm. It's your new man inside of you. It's just tremendous. It's really, really great thing once you can see it. So I hope that you'll be a supporter and I hope that uh, you'll be a tutor um, program person and then you can write questions to me and I'm happy to answer them as they come in and get those answers back to you while you're on your journey. So the black star is almost here and you're planning on being raptured. The rapture happens before the sudden destruction comes. The rapture is 1 Thessalonians 4. Destruction comes 1 Thessalonians 5. So if you're planned, if you can't go anywhere, you're stuck, you're in a big city, you are you can't go, and you're preparing yourself spiritually, this is the way you want to go. This is the spiritual answer. Now for me, I'm sitting in the Ozarks helping people physically and sitting in the Ozarks helping you spiritually instead of doing one or the other because whenever we stand, we're, we're, we're going to be raptured and we're all going to look the same. We're going to have white garments, we're going to look like chickens. I mean, as I sit up and look down upon what's happening there's a gigantic altar and Christ is on the other side of it and God's inside of him his mighty angels are all around us and we all look the same white garments we all go up there one at a time and we put our works we're all carrying stuff and some of us have big a lot of stuff carrying some of us carrying a little bit of stuff we put that stuff on that altar and we stand there and you best make sure you stand there don't make a move stand perfectly still when you back up because you think something bad's coming it's going to show up in your garment. You stand right there. And whenever Christ puts, he's going to make a, a motion down to the altar. And it's just going to go ablaze with fire. <clears throat> it's going to be tested by fire. And whenever it's precious stones and jewels and things, it's going to be fashioned into your crown, into your chest plate and everything. When, we, and when you turn around from the judgment and you go back towards your brethren, there's going to be a magical moment whenever their eyes are looking into your chest plate and all the shining stones you have that are glistening and they're going to get an imprint in you that's going to be stick with them for the entire age on the little rolodex inside of them you we contact each other by the incarnation that's in us i have a face in you and you have a face in me that's how we communicate in in heaven is we communicate back and forth inwardly and we're always all together all the time it's the way that it works so, but make sure you stand there at the judgment and stand there because when you back up, because you're afraid something bad's going to happen, if you have the bad earthly works, then whenever that smoke comes up, it's going to be black and sooty and it's going to turn your white garment dark. When you have the great works that you're doing everything you can every day to help people in this world, you see the black star, you see God's mystery, you're helping, helping, helping the best you can, you're running to win the race. Then whenever the Lord God puts his stuff he on he puts his fire on that and it goes poof then it leaves your garment perfectly white and you have these big giant stones you have a giant crown it's got big jewels you get a scepter those that have power have scepter those that have no scepter they don't have the power the same power they don't have the great jewels and the jewels that are in your chest plate that's going to determine where you can and cannot go in heaven there's going to be doors you go to they're all going to have stones a pattern of stones beside the door and if they match your chest plate, you can go in. If they do not, you cannot go in there. Unless you get a brother that's more mature to hold you by the hand. You can go in there and look around, but he's got to bring you back. And he better hold your hand the whole time. Because if you escape and run away, not only are you in trouble, he's going to be in trouble. He's going to get the merit. He's going to lose his access because of you. That's how it works. And uh, you can get more insight into that by looking at the traditions of Israel and their the ephods of the priesthood and the symbolism everything in the tabernacle of Moses in the temple means something in heaven as a heavenly counterpart to it and once you can see the three witnesses and your spirit wakes up and is alive inside of you you can see them you can see them by the spirit it's kind of like a woman's intuition that men don't understand but they have it 
ladies have it. How'd you know that? I don't, I just, I just know because women have control over that realm. Like men do the spiritual realm. We can see it. Whenever God lets you see it, you can see it. And I can see these things. That's how the diagrams are all drawn. You can see them clear as day. It's really, really a great thing where you can see it. I hope that you, you, that you'll be able to see it too. So appreciate your support very, very much. Hope that you'll come here to the website and get more information. I'm so happy that the links now work. And um, that's a great blessing for me. I'm going to try to do my best to um, make sure that this channel stays up and that um, everything is backed up just in case. So I thought it was backed up before. It took me a long time to get all the, every all those links updated and sent over to brand new tube just to find out that uh, import is not an import, like importing something else. So that's the message that I have for you. Hope you get more information here at the website and watch for the next mystery report that's going to be made for the month of April. It's going to be a good one, just like this one. And um, so get more information here at the website, and I'll see you on the next um, mystery report update.